Since the beginning of civilization, the world has been full of unknown things. Due to their existence, the balance of mankind's peaceful life has been upset. However, no matter how advanced our technology, no matter how great our scientific breakthroughs, there will always be anomalies that cannot be explained. We don't know where they come from or what their purpose is. These questions plague mankind and affect our daily lives. It's because of this that we founded the SCP Foundation, an organization dedicated to containing anomalous items, individuals, and phenomena. The SCP Foundation is committed to maintaining the normalcy of the world so that people may live free of fear. While ordinary people live in the sunlight, we must fight anomalies in the shadows. We must prevent them from being exposed to the public so that people may live in a rational and ordinary world. We secure. We contain. We protect.
Jason Carter is a death row inmate. In exchange for clemency, he has agreed to work with the SCP Foundation for 30 days. Upon completion of his work, he will be a free man. Jason Carter is now D-503. D-503 was given no clear instruction of the task to be completed. He must find them out for himself.
This was D-503's first day of work. SCP protocol mandates that D-503 now undergo a psychological evaluation. This was the first day D-503 psychological data was collected. You're probably wondering, how can this job earn freedom for a death row inmate? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Raymond Hamm from Site 83. Welcome to today's training conference. Today, I'm going to share with you a little project I've been working on called SCP-7457. The desert you saw just now is SCP-7457. D-503 is a volunteer who we invited to help us learn more about this desert. Prior to the Foundation's involvement with SCP-7457, 329 people went missing in this area. As a precaution, we have introduced lockdown measures as we attempt to find the cause of these disappearances. As everyone here is new to the Foundation, it will be good for you to learn about SCP-7457. Let me explain how it works. Before we get started, are there any questions? Dr. Ham, I'm Will Barton. 3rd Special Squad, Site 86. Hello, Will. Before I came here, I thought I had a basic understanding of the Foundation. I've heard of these anomalies, but only in terms of human anomalies. I had no idea that SCP-7457 was a desert. How do we begin to make sense of this? That's a good question, Will. All the unexplained phenomena we are monitoring are being labeled anomalies. Human anomalies regional anomalies, artifact anomalies, and various other phenomena beyond our control. The work of the Foundation is to isolate these anomalies and prevent the public from, shall we say, experiencing them? Okay, next question. Hello, Dr. Hem. I'm Mark Harris, a research intern from Site 27. In the video, we saw D-503 picking up garbage in the desert. Why did it do that? And what does this have to do with anomalies? Okay, Mark. What I can tell you now is that everything you see is part of SCP-7457. SCP anomalies can be a little difficult to understand at first. Just know that it, or they, 
have their own rules. Perhaps you'll understand what I mean once we finish watching the video. Okay, let's move on. The first week was fairly normal. However, there was an interesting occurrence on the eighth day.
That night, D-503's psychological data showed abnormal fluctuations. Analysis tells us that D-503 is dreaming. Unfortunately, though, we have no way of knowing what he dreamed of that night. SCP-7457's impact on D-503. Are there any questions before we go on? Hello, Dr. Ham. I'm Spencer Jones from the Special Operations Department of Site-21. Hello, Spencer. It's still unclear as to why D-503 needs to pick up all of this trash. If you wanted to monitor his psychological response to SCP-7457, why not just leave him out in the desert? Why assign him these tasks when there are already psychological evaluations taking place? Okay, our analysis has indicated that SCP-7457 produces a new cluster of trash every 8 minutes and 37 seconds. If waste collection is not done regularly, all that trash may soon flow into our world. It is worth noting, though, that the quantity of waste created here pales in comparison to the amount produced by humans. However, it still has the potential to become a significant problem in the future. By assigning these tasks to D-503, we can monitor his reactions while also containing the trash. There is another reason, but we will get to that one later. Is it not the case that the Foundation is exaggerating the importance of a minor issue before the issue is fully understood? Okay, everyone. I must emphasize that behind us is the general public, who are wholly unaware of any of this. Being meticulous and maintaining a serious attitude is essential at the SCP Foundation. Any oversight or underestimation of the enemy may result in disaster. Thank you, Dr. Ham. I understand. Good. Let's move on. The effects of SCP-7457 on D-503 became most obvious on day 15 of the test. Due to the conditions that day, we were only able to track his movements after recovering data from his radar. It was definitely a bad day, perhaps the worst, even for a death row inmate. found a radar that perfectly resembled his own. didn't seem to think much of it.
Persistent adverse physiological reactions proved to be a challenge for D-503. He still managed to complete his work on day 15. But then he encountered an incident. later, a visibly trembling D-503 returned to Site-8. We immediately performed a psychological evaluation. Major fluctuations can now be observed in D-503's physiological data. of the psychological evaluation were so troubling, we had to abort the mission. D-503 was able to break away from the Foundation's control. He has seen the test results of other Level D personnel were analyzed at SCP-7457. That's right, none of the Level D personnel at SCP-7457 have ever been able to leave this desert.
later, experiment participant D-722 found the radar that had belonged to D-503. The radar was 31 miles away from the waste treatment facility. All the data we have came from this radar. People entering SCP-7457 will suffer varying degrees of psychological stress within an acute period. It manifests as a range of neurological and mental disorders, as well as severe and unexplained hallucinations. So far, not one participant has left the desert unscathed. The Foundation has tested 31 Level D personnel in an area spanning 2,267 square miles. Our testing continues. When you work for the Foundation, you will face various anomalies. Some can kill you. Some may drive you crazy. Some will make you feel that living is worse than death. Let this be very clear. SCP-7457 is just a taste of what you will face in the future. Before joining the Foundation, you were all leaders in your respective fields and industries. Researchers, special forces, FBI agents, national security experts. Well, SCP does not care how smart you are how accomplished you are. It doesn't matter to them how many doctorates and titles you have. You are no different from helpless ants when confronted with these anomalies. Remember this. It is the most important advice you will receive. Do not take risks. You will die. You are not as special as you think you are. If you encounter an anomaly, put your pride and curiosity aside. Run because that's the only thing you can do. God won't protect you here. <sighs> Welcome to the Foundation, rookies. I'm Dr. Raymond Ham, and this ends the first class of our employee induction program.
I'm Agent Q from the Accident Investigation Department. Containment breach occurred at Pony Station and contact with the Foundation has been lost. Agent Bella Lawrence was given orders to enter Pony Station and retrieve the black box. Following is a transcript of the interview with Bella Lawrence. Blood pressure 175 over 110. Experiencing mild convulsions. Administer 5 milligrams of metaphor to help control blood pressure. Bella? Bella? The drugs seem to be taking effect. Go ahead and ask questions. I can't be certain how long you should stay away from Where's the black box, Sparrow? Three days ago, you were tasked with investigating the situation at Site 74, Pony Station. You were assigned to retrieve the black box. Now, out with it. Where is the black box? I brought it back. I brought the black box back. Don't lie to us. You never brought it back. No, that that's impossible. I remember. I completed my assigned task. I I swear I shaved my head. Ugh. All right, here now. This isn't an interrogation. We are not here to lay blame or point any fingers. Bella, I'm terribly sorry to have to bother you in such a state, but it is critical that we find that black box. We need to know what happened at Pony Station. My... my memory's a mess at the moment. That's fine. We'll take it slowly. Step by step. Why don't we start from the moment you received your mission? Tell us what you remember. I'll try. That night... 
Currently heading to mission site Site 74, Pony Station. We'll arrive in about three minutes. Very good, Sparrow. It's been 48 hours since the Foundation lost contact with Pony Station. SCP-701 experiments there have been ongoing. We have reason to suspect a containment breach. What is my mission? According to Foundation security regulation 709S, each site must have a black box placed in a secure area to assist in identifying the cause of an accident, should one occur. Your task is to investigate the situation and retrieve the black box. Black box? Got it. Okay, I've arrived. I'm able to observe the mission site from here, but it doesn't seem like one of the Foundation's secure facilities. Pony Station, officially known as Site 74, was originally a hydroelectric power station. After it was abandoned, the Foundation repurposed it as one of their sites. Initially, it was used only to contain a few safe level anomalies, but recently it's also taken over SCP-701. I don't know all the details. We won't know the truth until you retrieve the black box. Got it. I'll complete the task as instructed and retrieve the black box. I've just entered Pony Station. Retrieve the black box from the lab. Move 705. Take the elevator to the seventh floor. Sparrow. Must. What's that? Bald Eagle. You're cutting out. Damn. This is out of the safe range. I'll place a reality anchor. Oh. Okay. Much better. Now let's find that elevator. Tyler Cooper. I've heard of this guy. A bit of an eccentric and a real secret.
All the plans, including the project schedule that follows, have been disrupted. The actors of the whole site is theirs. They managed to procure a goddamn script from God knows where, and they've taken over my laboratory accordingly. And Dr. Cooper, or whatever his name is in particular, he puts on airs every time the operation starts as if everyone should listen to him. Who does he think he is? I have to let him know who's the boss around here. This must be the elevator. To the seventh floor, then. Blood we offered. The hanged king we served. I serve my king with my blood? Blissful suffocation? Sacrifice of sin? What's this? Some kind of poem? Ah! Uh, my head! Ah! Uh, 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 
familiar with cognito hazards. I've been trained to deal with them. But this wasn't anything like that. I couldn't breathe. It was like there was a knot tied around my throat. I was weightless, hanging, gasping. No matter how much I struggled, nothing helped. That does sound terrifying. But perhaps it was just a nightmare, though. No. We wake up from nightmares, not from this. Are you kidding me? I guess I'm taking the stairs. This cognito hazard, could it have something to do with SCP-701? The situation here is much more serious than I expected.
must be the archive. It's all very unusual these days. Many people have come to the site, but they haven't registered with the authorities. I've heard that Cooper and his team are rehearsing a script into a play, and that all participants are required to record their daily status. My experiment has to be put on hold because there's no one left to work on it. It's not right. I'll write an email to the minister and inform him of the malpractice going on here. Who's that? Dr. Cooper needs so many volunteers. And what on earth is this SCP-701? Finally, luck is on my side. This ought to get me to the seventh floor. What's going on here? Fourth floor again? Hmm. The way out of here might have something to do with these clocks. So notice.
Feeling better now. Suffocation, like a rope looped around my neck, pulling tight, weightless, hanging, nothing around me, just my feet dangling, struggling, fighting. It will swallow me and make me its slave. Ella, you are completely safe here. Nothing can hurt you. Okay, let's continue. The situation there was much worse than expected. Much worse. I knew I had to get in touch with the Foundation. Uh, I managed to find a phone, and I called her back up. This is Sparrow, 09868, for Bald Eagle. I'm at Pony Station on the seventh floor. The situation here is much worse than expected. I need backup. Bella, are you sure this is actually what happened? What do you mean? Yes, of course I'm sure. Come on, Bella, try and focus. What are you talking about? Bella. You never made that phone call. I... of course I... What? I... Pony Station was completely cut off. There was no contact with the outside world whatsoever. A phone call? That would have been impossible. No! I... but... I saw... What did you see? Tell us what you saw. Something bad happened here. We're back. 
graduating. Damn it. After the show, everyone went crazy. Some hacked themselves. Some killed each other like beasts. That damn evil white monster. This was all destined to happen when it brought in that script. Everything that happened here is all Cooper's fault. It's their fault! This will be the last recording from the experiment. The hydropower plant will shut down forever. And no doubt my experiment will also... What's going on? What's going on? Ah! Rehearsals? A play? What is up with this SCP-701 experiment?
does it look like they're all going to the same place? The black box. Bella, we really need you to tell us the truth here. What do you mean? I'm telling you the truth. I completed my task. I retrieved the black box from Pony Station. Looks like the Cognito Hazards really did a number on her. What are you talking about? I'm fine. Bella, there was no black box in sight when we found you. That's impossible. I'm positive. I... I know I had it in the escape elevator. And there is no escape elevator in Pony Station. None of what you're saying adds up. That's impossible. It's just impossible. Look at me, Bella. Try and focus. What really happened? What really happened? Bella. Think carefully. I... I... I...
Fuck. Not again. <laughs> SCP-701 is a script. One performance and now all of Pony Station is on. Dr. Cooper, what have you done? Here's one. SCP-701, The Hanged King's Tragedy. Oh, 
Magneto Hazard again. I need to leave right now. my blood. I serve my king. With my blood, 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 I serve my king. Her condition is unstable. I've just injected her with a sedative, but you need to let her rest for a while. Thanks, Doctor. Well, let's go then. What? We haven't found the black box yet. You still don't get it, do you? Get what? What do you mean? A black box is merely a vehicle for recording the truth. But a black box isn't always a black box. You mean... That's right. She is now the black box. Got time for a cold one? Because our work here is done. I serve my king with my blood. Blissful suffocation. Sacrifice of sin. The black box has been properly contained at Site 105 and pending further investigation. Above is the full record of the inquiry.
There are many stories in this world. Some are read widely all over the world. Some are hidden in dust and known only by a handful of people. Today I'm going to tell you a story no one else has heard before. A real story of mystery and wonder and adventure. And then you too will become the guardian of this story. The story takes place in a world of long ago. The hero of our story is a little boy. His name is Daniel. One day, out of nowhere, Daniel got a serious case of chicken pox. It made him look like a strawberry. To make sure he didn't spread it to others, Mrs. Page, the principal, had him isolate in an attic. And so, in the attic he lived, all on his own. Mr. Daniel, while up here in this attic, you'll have plenty of time to practice your penny whistle. I hope you practice well and prepare for next month's art festival. But Mrs. Page, the melody is so difficult. Don't give up, boy. You don't give up before you fight. Daniel was reluctant at first, but he trusted Mrs. Page and he knew he should listen. And so he practiced the penny whistle.
Suddenly, he heard some strange noises in the corner of the attic. Huh? Who's there? Daniel decided to go over and take a look. It was a mouse trap, and there was a red origami paper dragon inside of it. Daniel carefully removed it. It was marvelous and beautiful. The only problem was part of its wing was damaged. But Daniel found a way to repair it. Daniel held the repaired paper dragon high, high up in the air, imagining that it soared over all the world below. He played and played with the paper dragon. Wee! Woo! Dragon! Soar! <sighs> in the warm afternoon sun, Daniel had to fight his eyelids just to keep them open. Is it, could it be? Or is this all just a dream? The next day, with boredom and loneliness weighing him down, he began to fiddle with the old radio. scrunched up ball of paper rolled over to his feet. Where did this paper ball come from? Just as Daniel went to pick it up, the ball suddenly came to life and it rolled away. Daniel chased after it. Just as he was about to seize the rolling paper ball, suddenly, terrible sparks erupted from it. Before his very eyes, the paper ball began to grow bigger and bigger. At that moment, a red figure suddenly appeared. The red figure quickly subdued the paper ball and threw it into a cardboard box. Daniel studied the red figure carefully. It had a sticker on its fluttering wing. It was the paper dragon. I wasn't dreaming. Thank you for saving me. Daniel was grateful and very happy. He walked closer to the paper dragon, but the paper dragon seemed timid and afraid and backed away. Just then, Daniel had an idea. He took out his penny whistle and slowly played a tune.
paper dragon enjoyed the sound very much. It began to move along with the rhythm, flipping up and down in the air. Soon the two were playing and dancing, just like old friends. The paper dragon traced out a beautiful arc in the air, communicating with Daniel in a unique way. My cherished friend, after many long years, we finally meet again. Tell me, how has your family been? A great thank you for playing that music for me. You know how I love the beautiful rhythm of that instrument. But we ought to take precautions, as the room is not stable. Do you still remember how the room works? You are welcome to visit any time. The piece of paper then changed back into the shape of a paper dragon and flew into the cardboard box. The box closed shut and a calm silence was restored to the attic. Daniel rushed to find a watercolor pen and marked the box with excitement in his fingertips. Over the next few days, the paper dragon came out often to play with Daniel. During this time, Daniel introduced many of his friends to the paper dragon. My cat's name is Mrs. Carter. Ever since I secretly fed her some fish for dinner, we've been good friends. That's Duke, Mrs. Jessica's pet. He doesn't like rainy days, or Mrs. Carter. Only smoke sausages for his cake. And now, we are friends too. My name is Daniel, what's your name? The paper dragon flapped its wings, as if it didn't understand him. Hmm, well, since you like the sound of the penny whistle so much, why don't I just call you Penny? I'll keep practicing to make it sound better. Daniel and Penny then played baseball together in the attic. Let's play cat. But just as they were in the middle of enjoying themselves, a violent shaking suddenly rose from the ground. The stubborn earthquake is back at it, folks, and it seems even stronger than last time. At this moment, the box suddenly shot open, and thick clouds of smoke billowed out, followed by several paper balls. Penny attacked the paper balls without a moment's hesitation and promptly threw them back into the box. Penny then flew around in front of Daniel and rushed right back into the box. As the box closed, the earthquake stopped. Facing a friend's farewell without a formal goodbye, Daniel felt confused and lost. He moved the box to the center of the attic Facing it, he practiced his penny whistle, day in and day out. As the days went by, Daniel's playing became smoother. One day, the box suddenly began to move. Uh -huh. 
One, two, three, four. This time there were four paper dragons. But they weren't alone. Enemies began to jump out of the box too. small attic, the four paper dragons fought fiercely against the paper balls. This time, the paper balls used new tactics. They clumped together into a single monstrous ball of paper. It began to shoot strong bursts of electric sparks at the paper dragons as they flew through the air. As they were hit, the paper dragons fell from the air, one after the other. Seeing the injured paper dragons, Daniel felt very distressed and anxious. Just then, one of the paper dragons painfully started to fly and gathered the remainder of its power. The paper dragon transformed into a great beam of light and dove straight down to pierce through the monstrous paper ball. And then came another paper dragon. The monstrous paper ball was blasted to bits, exploding into smaller paper balls. Trembling, they struggled to escape back into the box. The sacrificed paper dragons were reduced to swirling shreds of paper, and a silence pervaded. Peace and tranquility were restored once again to the attic. Daniel saw the remaining two paper dragons lying on the floor, badly wounded. He rushed to grab some stickers and treated them at once. Suddenly, countless paper dragons began to gush from the box. The two wounded paper dragons were repaired and began to fly. Like two colored threads, they merged with the other dragons, flying in unison. The dragons moved like a tide, flying freely through the attic. Daniel eagerly took out his penny whistle. He showed all his paper dragon friends the results of his hard work and practice. In the sweet melody of his playing, Daniel felt himself enter into the world of dragons.
paper dragons merged into a long letter and floated down towards Daniel to tell their story. After the last war, the fantasy world enjoyed a long spell of peace and stability. But now, the giants have returned. They have launched ferocious attacks, trying to invade your world through the room. We are prepared to launch the final defense. Then we will have to destroy your room, for it is the last remaining entryway into your world. Please believe, this farewell will only be temporary. We will not be apart forever, and we will never forget our eternal mission of protecting you. At that moment, the paper dragons flew back into the box. Daniel still couldn't fully understand what the paper dragons had meant, but he had a vague feeling in his heart that he may never see his new friends again. A few days later, Daniel's chicken pox had fully recovered. He could now play the penny whistle very, very well. But the paper dragons never returned. Maybe it was time to leave and move on. Earthquake warning! Magnitude 6.2! A massive earthquake is hitting our town! All townspeople, please leave your houses immediately and move to safe open spaces! Just then, countless paper dragons shot from the cardboard box. However, it seemed like they were under attack spinning and falling through the air in confusion. What's happening? Daniel quickly grabbed the stickers out from his bag and did his best to heal the injured paper dragons. together and push Daniel away, subduing him firmly in the corner. He couldn't move. Suddenly, ominous clouds rose from the box, and a violent lightning flashed through the room. The figure of a giant slowly emerged from the thick clouds, and the entire attic became overwhelmed with its evil aura. unleashed its power maniacally. The paper dragon struggled against it, with no means of fighting back. At this critical moment, two paper dragons shined brilliantly. Together, they heroically crashed their bodies into the giant. Daniel thought the giant had been defeated by the paper dragons. But soon, he found that things would probably not be so simple. The giant's figure could still be seen in the thick smoke, looking evil and terrible. The attacks of the paper dragons had had no effect, and the giant had only grown stronger. 
it fought back with a new ferocity. The paper dragons were simply no match for it. Dragons now all but defeated, Daniel spotted a frail figure in the distance. It was Penny. It flew gently in front of Daniel and affectionately rubbed its head against his fingers, as if this whole crisis had never happened. Daniel felt like Penny was trying to tell him something, but he didn't quite understand what. Penny then left Daniel and soared into the air with a determination in its wings. Suddenly, the other paper dragons seemed to be summoned. They flew through the air, all together in unison, responding to the call without an ounce of hesitation. At that moment, Penny turned into a great red beam and rushed fast towards the giant. The other dragons followed shining together like a shooting star. At that moment, Daniel seemed to see a real dragon flying. No! The huge explosion from the impact drowned out everything else in the attic. The attic rained down with countless pieces of paper, the leftover scraps of the paper dragons. Daniel wanted to collect all of the pieces. He thought he could still fix them. A few days later, the art festival was held as scheduled. Daniel attended the show with his penny whistle. And now, Daniel Trevor will perform a penny whistle solo of a song titled, Fly With Me.
might be wondering, what happened next? Are there still paper dragons in the world? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. But I believe that they are still protecting us somewhere in this world, just like they promised they would forever into eternity.
<clears throat> D6744, please provide your identification code according to the mission letter. Four and twenty blackbirds. Uh, tell me, Doc, when was the last time this rag on my head was washed? D6744, according to the seventh edition of the Security Regulation Amendment, you must first provide your identification code. Otherwise, you will be executed. All right, all right. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. You're a real fan of these formalities. Everything's got to be right by the book with you. Oh, God! Fuck! Mike Donald, consciousness intrusion expert, former leader of MTF UP2. Code name, Spider. Now, level D personnel, number 6744. Enough with these damn formalities. Just what the hell you want me to do? D6744, do you know about the witch plan? I've heard the name, that's all. The plan is under the direct command of O5. Every last detail of the plan is protected by the strictest confidential terms. So what? D6744. What you're about to witness is top secret information of the Foundation. The hell is going on? A few hours ago, something went wrong with the witch plan experiment. The energy of the human anomaly, SCP-239, is out of control and has begun diffusing outward, disintegrating everything it touches. You guys seriously never cease to amaze me. SCP-239 is now a ticking time bomb. She could go off at any moment. D6744, I need you to enter the consciousness of SCP-239 to stop this bomb from exploding. The neural key is fully charged and ready to uh, enter up, the target up, consciousness uh, space. To... Begin the program. Consciousness uh, well, begins to link. Uh, D6744, we God don't have much time left. Three, fuck, fuck, two, wait, wait. D-6744, can you hear me? Son of a bitch! Fuck you! The situation is urgent. If you were still the way you used to be, you would have done the same. Uh, hello there? Uh, hey, wait! D-6744, what did you see? A little girl, but she ran away when she saw me. That little girl is SCP-239. What else have you discovered? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help. Help me. The girl's consciousness is severely damaged. That probably explains her total loss of energy control. Then how should we proceed? I'll have to enter her pre-conscious. If there's a solution to this, it's gonna be in there. Good. D6744. You really are the right person for this mission. D-6744, I must remind you, SCP-239 is no ordinary girl. She is uniquely dangerous. Do not forget. Yeah, I got it. I'm dangerous too, don't forget. Wings and passion. 
Action, Fresh, Crescent Aurora, Red, Sleep, Stone Green, Touch, Move, Anxiety, Close. Conducting ability control test number 125 of SCP-239. Okay, let us begin. First, set voltage strength to 30 kilovolts. Power on. SCP-239, move the target object to the designated location. Ability control test number 125 has failed. The voltage intensity must be insufficient. I'll need a new test site, along with new equipment that can handle a greater voltage load. of SCP-239 is still diffusing outward. What's your situation? The situation's more complicated than I thought. I'm gonna need more time. Be quick about it. I got it! Quit rushing me!
Have you heard? Heard what? O5 is displeased with the slow progress of Dr. Pierce's experiments. They've appointed a new director to take over the project. You sure it's not just a rumor? Today's morning session was chaired by Dr. Pierce. It's true. Trust me. If I'm being honest, I don't really like Dr. Pierce. Something about him, you know, just gives me the creep. <coughs> He's coming. Stop. <laughs> How are the preparations for the experiment coming along? Equipment's been checked. Everything is ready. Good. Anything to be aware of? Sam went to the counseling room after yesterday's experiment. Give him an injection of amnestic agent and let Arthur take his place. Set voltage strength to 250 kilovolts. Dr. Pierce, the heart rate of SCP-239 has now exceeded 160. Her physiological indicators are quickly approaching their limit. Perhaps we should consider pausing for a while. Continue. Pressurize. Set to 250 kilovolts. Go. Now. SCP-239. Pay close attention to my instructions. Crush that car in front of you. What's the meaning of this? Sean Pierce. Violet. Long time, Sean. What's it been? Seven years? I've got no time to play catch-up with you. Not a great first impression you're leaving either. Barging into my lab and interfering with my experiments. According to Foundation security regulations, I could have you detained, you know. <laughs> Still the same old tempo. You haven't changed one bit, Sean. Well, if you want to talk business, then let's talk business. You should have a look at this first. This is... No. This is O5's mandate. Effective immediately. Witch plan and all SCP-239 experiments will be led by me. No, that's... No! This is a mistake! It's not possible! Don't take it personal, Sean. The simple fact is that the development of SCP-239 is moving too slow. 
They want a more ambitious approach. A new process, if you will. A new process? What new process? Just what do you know about process? Please, Violet, enlighten me. Sean, let us end our bickering with this. Victory comes to those who fight, and to those who last. Bird's Nest, do you copy? Copy, loud and clear. Just what exactly is which plan? That's not your concern. Focus on the mission at hand. Stop the spread of energy diffusion released by SCP-239 and do it quick. Yeah, sure. The storybooks and toys we ordered have arrived at C3 Warehouse. Good. How's the containment room remodeling coming along? The bed and daily necessities are all in place. The demolition of the ARB potential development plan will be completed next. Good and good. Now, how about the formal meeting with our little princess? <laughs> When you feel scared, just close your eyes. Imagine something beautiful, and those terrible things will disappear. Who... Who are you? My name is Violet Tattoo. You can just call me Violet. I will take care of you from now on. No one will hurt you ever again. That's it for today's bedtime story. Hi. We'll have a little test tomorrow. You need your rest. Afraid. S sleep. Nightmares. SCP-239, are you afraid of having nightmares again? Yes. 
afraid. Just remember what I told you. When you feel scared, just close your eyes. Imagine your little friends in the stories all running out of their books to come play with you. Then you won't be afraid. Get some sleep now. Remember to imagine those beautiful images. The giraffes speak from way up high. The house should have a high roof, and place should hang from the ceiling. The robin flaps its wings and flies away. The hippos let out a loud yawn. The house should be built in a pool, so we can bathe anytime and sleep anytime. The robin shakes off the water droplets and flies away. shakes its head and flies away. It flies and flies, and finally it lands on the back of a rhinoceros. The rhinoceros says, Everyone travels with all sorts of strange questions inside, but after traveling far and long enough, the 
answer that everyone finds is that the truth is not far or it lays within our very hearts. Robin, what kind of home do you want? The Robin says, the home I want is... SCP-239, what are you doing? What's going on here? What's happening? SCP-239, we have to work and rest according to plan. But I... Alex, clear up the mess. At once, Director. SCP-239, this is all for your own good. You must be obedient and complete tomorrow's test. After that, I'll give you a gift. A gift? All right. Back to sleep now, SCP-239. <laughs> is next week. I'll see to it, Director. What shall we do with these creations of SCP-239? Destroy them. You there? D-6744 calling Bird's Nest. D-6744 calling Bird's Nest. What the hell are these guys up to? Director Tattoo. The experimental site has been fully prepared. The report may begin at any time. Excellent. If today's experiment goes smoothly, I will have full control over which plan. Go, check again to be sure that everything is in place. There can be no omissions. At once, Director. Presenting which plan's progress to the O5 Council shortly. Right, yes, that's just it. Listen, SCP-239's abilities are greater than you could ever imagine. She is infinitely more powerful now than when she was born. Your experimental procedures lack the proper controls. Any mistake, no matter how minuscule, could have irreversible consequences. Dr. Pierce, let us not forget that it was your previous missteps that caused us to miss the ideal incubation period for SCP-239. If we don't cultivate her using my method, the window of opportunity will be closed for good. But listen, if you go about it using your method, 
you will repeat the accident that happened seven years ago. You do remember, don't you? Heisenberg, Freeman, Claire? Enough, Sean. Don't you dare bring up their names. Sean, the progress of civilization has always come with sacrifices. You don't get one without the other. To have the chance to harness the abilities of SCP-239, no price is too great. Violet, you are playing with fire. Dr. Pierce, it's time. I suggest you go to the first floor to get front row seats to civilization's next leap of progress. Violet! Listen to me! Violet!
that's an order. Stop now. Oh, that mess. God damn it. Why won't it open? Sean? Sean! Sean! The backup door outside! Help me open it! Come on, quick! Violet, I told you you were playing with fire. Cut the bullshit and let me out! She's lost her mind! What are you doing? Open it! Open the damn thing! No. No, Violet. I can't. What? What do you mean? SCP-239 is out of control. Why would I open the gate? What the fuck are you saying? Open it! You're right, Violet. Victory comes to those who fight, and to those who last. You're talking crazy, Sean! This is not that! Open the fucking thing! An accident of this magnitude! It's just what I need to prove myself. Sean! Sean, don't think like that! We can work together! We'll do it your way! Your rules, your method! Whatever you want! We'll do... I know! I'll quit! I'll resign! Which plan is all yours? I will use these learnings to improve the plan and equipment. I've never been so certain of success. No, Sean. Let's not think like that. Let's talk things through. You have proven invaluable, Violet. You will not die in vain. No, Sean, no! No, 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 you fuck! You fuck it, Sean! I quit! Sean! output is getting out of hand. How much longer? So this is the witch plant, huh? Are we anything more than tools to you? It's not about that. This is about saving the world. Either you fix this, or we're all screwed. That's what I'm doing. Then move your ass and do it already. Yeah, suck my nuts. Quitting the Foundation was the best damn decision of my life. <laughs> I now present to you the ARB Potential Development Device 2.0. This device is capable of not only better stimulating the potential of abnormal objects, but can also automatically turn on the respective electric field control, so long as the abnormal objects exceed the preset amplitude. This will ensure that the experiment is foolproof, with zero chance of runaway. The tragedy of Director Tau 2 cannot be repeated. We must learn from our mistakes. We must not forget the enormous power of SCP-239. And we must treat security as a top priority. Otherwise, all of this will be for nothing. Do not forget the credence we live by. Secure, contain, protect. This, we must uphold at any time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Increase the voltage strength to 1,000 kilovolts! 
Hold on. The outflow of energy of SCP-239 has subsided and is now beginning to dissipate. We have regained control. But just hold on. Again, a job well done. The synapse is now ready to be disconnected. Can you just hold the fuck on and listen for a damn change? What's the matter? The problem hasn't yet been solved. She's still lost deep in her mental anguish. That's not our concern. The crisis has been averted. Innumerable lives have been saved. Your mission is complete. My mission's not complete until she is stable. Compassion in times of desperation leads only to the destruction of yourself. Three minutes. You owe me that much. For all this, you owe me. I can enter her subconscious and fix this. Three minutes. Very well. I'll disconnect the synapse in three minutes. If you're not back, then so be it. I will show no compassion. Maternal dystocia, profuse bleeding, send to operating room now. Lovely princess with beautiful blue eyes. Have you thought of a good name for her? She is my little angel. I'm super. Target SCP-239 has been contained. SCP-239! 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 That's an order! SCP-239! That's an order! SCP-239! Do as I say! No! SCP-239! Do as I say! Come on! Do it! Come on! Do it! No! No! SCP-239! No! SCP-239! No! SCP-239! No, no, no! Don't blame yourself. 
yourself. None of this is your fault. Maybe you weren't meant for this world. Star stickers and colorful lights everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere I go, they twinkle, twinkle like little eyes. So many good books with the cutest animals inside. They only say nice things to me. They always want to chat with me. So many beautiful decorations. A soft bed, mountains of toys. I can play all day, anywhere I want. I'll have my favorite toy, a beautiful carousel. I'll ride and ride, and it will take me anywhere. There, I will not be yelled at. I will not be punished. I can sing as much as I like. I hope, I hope. I hope so much to live here forever. My home. Saguros is home. Ah. Oh, ah. Oh, my head. Take a deep breath. Just some minor side effects from the forced disconnection. She's not coming back. What? In the end, she chose to shut off her subconscious. She'll sleep forever, like a plant. Maybe that's for the best. Anyways, our primary concern is the incident report. It'll require some brainstorming. Not my concern. I'll arrange for someone to take you back. See you on the next mission. Hmm. <laughs> Not in this lifetime.
as I say. There is an access card on the desk. Take it and exit through the door on the other side. The passcode is 0426. Find room B426 and run the program on the computer.
am a toaster. I am a toaster. I am a toaster. I am a toaster. Good job. 
job, Carl. I'm glad you made it through. Have you ever felt like there were memories in your head and things you never experienced? Whispers of people you never met? These were not hallucinations. They're your actual memories. Carl, you are not a rookie at all. You are a member of Mega 5. You always have been. My name is Marion Wheeler, captain of Mega 5. Welcome back, Gardner Carl. Now, we need to talk about 55.